which has the music trigger here on the top. Where is the music? It doesn't have music. So like, it's, it's a couple of presses, so you just don't talk into it. So, so like this, it doesn't react. Good. So I should never talk into this. Yeah. OK, OK. Never. Hello. Actually, yeah, I'm talking first, actually, aren't I? So? Hello, Dave Kwon. Yeah. I'm talking first, so yeah, just hand me the mic. OK. Yeah, sure. Uh, just one more thing. Uh, we have these cards available for people. Yeah. Who asked questions? Who asked questions. Perfect. So you can, very close more, you can use how many you want. Call your door. Completely up to you. I'm trying all my check. This is like, I'm, I've got all, Wonderful. I've been here for like three years. I've got to practice. <laughs> <laughs> so I will also show you this time. And, and we get to ignore those, right? No, please. Okay. So don't use the mic, ignore the sign. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. And, I'm sorry, your name was... Albi. It's Albi. Albi. Okay. okay. So we have 40 minutes total, including the question. I would like to ask you to take your seats. I'm, like, mm. I'm going to start on this slide. We will uh, yeah. start in a minute. Oh. Awesome. So I hope you are ready and full of energy and excitement for the for the next talk. So I think we are ready, guys. So please warmly welcome Brian Exelbeard and Navid Sheikh. Thank you very much. Um, it's great to be here. I want to thank the conference organizers for what they've done. It's been fantastic. Um, I hope you all are ready for this. So I'm Brian Exelbeard. Uh, I work for Red Hat. I work with Project Atomic. I work specifically on the Atomic Developer Bundle with my colleague, uh, who I'll let introduce himself. Yep. Uh, hi, this is Navid. Uh, I work for Red Hat, and I mostly have on Atomic Developer Bundle, and it's uh, connection with the client-side tools. I'm from India. Um, and I guess I'll add, I'm from America, but I live here, so you can ask all of your Czech language questions to someone else, um, because I'm, yeah, struggling. Um, so anyway, we're here to talk about the Atomic Developer Bundle today, but we had a couple of questions first. How many people here would describe themselves as mostly on a dev, or mostly on the dev side of the equation, just by show of hands? Okay, so for those watching the live stream, that was about 4,000 people in the audience. Um, and how many of you would describe yourselves as mostly on the ops side of the equation? And so I'm assuming the other 3,000 people showed up today to find out how computers work. Okay, that, good, love to see that. Um, second question is, how many of you work in an environment where 100% of the computers are all running the same operating system? And I'm talking about the desktops or laptops. Okay, I want to talk to you guys later, because I'm very interested in how that happened. Um, so I'm seeing that like 99% of the people here are in a mixed development, mixed uh, environment for their local computers, and that's good to hear. So we're here to talk about the uh, Atomic Developer Bundle, and Naveed, take it away. Yep. Oh wait, sorry, I'm the first slide. Yep. So what's the problem? Um, well, we're trying to make Linux container development easy. That's the goals of Project Atomic. And we want this to be easy for developers of all stripes. Um, we want to look at uniform development environments. That's what everybody wants in their organization. The problem is that developers tend to like diversity. They have their own particular setups. They like their own particular tools. They like their own particular builds. They like their own particular editors, whatever the case may be. So we need to find a balance between what's going to make what comes out of the process great for operations, but what goes into the process has the level of feel that's going to make developers productive. We want to help developers concentrate on development. We want to help operators concentrate on operations. Um, we don't want a lot of people to spend a lot of time doing things across the work where it's not productive work. So for example, if you're deploying a new orchestrator for your containers, your developers just need an environment they can dev in. They shouldn't spend three weeks learning how to configure an orchestrator just so that they can get started. 
Um, the other thing is, since 99% of us work in environments with mixed operating systems, not all the operating systems support what we're doing in production. You can't run Linux containers natively on Windows and Mac. We need to help people out there. And we're also seeing that a lot of the tools that have come out in the market to try and solve some of these problems, they're not necessarily all open, and they're not necessarily all generic in their usability. A lot of them have very specific use cases or are trying to feed very specific tool chains. Yep. So, uh, solution to the problems that we have. So, we have come up with uh, a platform independent uh, developer environment tool uh, where a developer who is uh, running on Windows or Mac or Linux uh, should be able to develop on containers. Uh, so this uh, basically we have come up with uh, a vagrant box uh, which is platform independent so that uh, developers running on non linux platform should be uh, able to use these uh, vagrant boxes uh, this vagrant box to uh, containerize their uh, de containerize their applications and to be able to to enable them to work on containers uh, so w what all things we have in this vag vagrant, bo vagrant box so we have pre configured tools uh, for example different types of orchest or orchestrators like docker kubernetes openshift mesos marathon this uh, also this box is extensible so this does not this box does not enforce a uh, uh, developer or devops to use particular stack for example a stack uh, from a particular vendor like docker docker machine it does not uh, enforce uh, a developer to use particular set of stack uh, so a developer is free uh, to choose the orchestrator that developer wants to containerize his application upon and uh, pull the respective box and uh, start hacking. So <coughs> we also we have also come up with Nalikula specification, which is, which is a way to uh, define your application in a way that your application is <coughs> uh, is packaged once and is able to be deployed on the different orchestrator. Uh, so to demo about the Vagrant Box or ADB, we have come up with three different use cases. Command line with Carla, uh, ID Igor, and uh, my environment Mike. So uh, let's start with the demo. Uh, so command line Carla. Uh, so Carla wants just a command, uh, command line. She doesn't want rest. And she doesn't want to uh, pollute her machine uh, uh, with the with the development uh, tools that she is going to configure on this box. Okay. So in this demo, we are going to see uh, a sample vagrant file uh, which we have in our repository, and this vagrant file configures a vagrant box uh, with uh, Kubernetes. So as you can see, uh, you can pull in this vagrant file, just have it, and do vagrant up. So Carla has a Vagrant box, which is ADB, and it has uh, Kubernetes pre-configured in, in it. Now Carla gets, uh, gets access to uh, Kubernetes. So as you can see, the Kubernetes is running here with a single node setup. So uh, we have configured Kubernetes with single node setup here. Master and Minion is residing in the same box, uh, and we also have con we also con we have also configured Docker here. Right. So the Docker which is running here is running on local Unix uh, Unix socket as well as the TCP port, so that uh, Kala can run the Docker locally as well as uh, from the client from different client like uh, the docker client from outside the box and using the eclipse so here kala gets uh, access to the box uh, using command line with different tools pre configured now if kala wants to uh, deploy his application and test his application using kubernetes she uh, does not really need to worry about setting up kubernetes uh, on the box she just need to do vagrant up and start with uh, start with hacking The second use case that we have is ID Igor. So uh, uh, Igor always works on ID. So the example that we are going to demo here is of Eclipse. Uh, Igor does not really want to know about that 
uh, does not really want to know about the underlying stuff that's happening. Ego just cares about uh, that this is my application which is in uh, my Eclipse and I want to containerize my application. Uh, so ego gets an, uh, so we have enabled this tooling using uh, different plugins. Uh, one of the plugin that we have come up with, its name is Vagrant ADB Info, which is going to be renamed soon. So I'll talk about that. So this plugin, uh, this uh, configures Igor's environment and in a way that different client side tooling can connect to the Docker daemon or different services that are running inside the box. So uh, I'll demo a point. Yeah. So here all Igor needs to do is get a vagrant file, that's it. And since we are using VirtualBox as a provider, we, are, we have configured the private networking. Vagrant up. Yep, so I already have the background box up and running, and I need to execute this plugin. So I'll show you. Plugin name is Vagrant ADB Info. So here, as you can see, uh, the plugin is doing, uh, doing two things. One is uh, first, it is copying over the required client side search for Docker client to connect to the Docker daemon which is running inside the box. Because as I mentioned earlier, the Docker daemon inside the box is configured to run over TCP and it is protected uh, using the TLS. So for any client which wants to connect to Docker daemon inside the box, the client need required client side certs. So this daemon is doing, uh, this plugin is copying over the cert from inside the box to the host machine and displaying the, this information. Uh, these required environment variables are necessary for any client to connect to the daemon inside the box. So the last line in the output, as you can see, if you just uh, eval evaluate all the environment variables, the client should be ready to work. So now I'll... So in Eclipse, uh, we have a Docker plugin which consumes uh, the TCP APIs, which implements the TCP APIs, and uh, it can connect to a Docker daemon. So here I have Docker Explorer, which is a view for connecting to Docker daemon. And as you can see that all I have to do is fill in the information. So this uh, view can also connect to, if you have the local Docker uh, daemon running on your box, you can connect to the daemon using the Unix socket, or if uh, since we are connecting to the box, uh, ADB box, so uh, we need to input the URI. Yep. Okay. So uh, since the the daemon which is running inside the box is uh, is protected using search, so no uh, any so that no any random client should connect to it. So the, the connection should fail if we, uh, if we do not provide the path to the search. So the ping now failed, but uh, since if we give the right path of the search, as you can see, Bring up the box once again. Okay. Should be able to live demos. Sorry about that. So what? Should we just move on? Yep. So we'll move to next demo. I'm sorry about that. Live demos.
We apparently didn't make the correct sacrifices before we started. We are very sorry. Um, but we're now really going to tempt fate with the next demo. Uh, this is my environment mic, and we wanted to show off some cross-platform functionality, but we didn't have a Windows machine available. So, did you actually screw that in? No. Who screws that in? Um, so, we brought a Mac instead. One second. Okay, cool, it worked. Um, okay, so what we have done on this Mac is we have downloaded VirtualBox because that's the supported, one of the two supported hypervisors and the only one supported on Mac. We have downloaded Vagrant so that we can run the Vagrant files. And then we've downloaded a set of tools from the upstream uh, because the community is already producing tools for us. So we've got the Docker client, uh, version 182 in this case for the Mac. We have the current OpenShift. Actually, I think this is a little behind on OpenShift, but it's the OpenShift client OC. And then we're actually running Cube Control from uh, Homebrew. Uh, if you've used the Mac, they have a side packaging system called Homebrew, and Cube Control is actually packaged, so you can just brew install Cube Control. Um, on the Mac, let's find my terminal. Is that big enough in the back? Perfect. Okay. So, um, on this, let's take a look at like Docker Info. So, we've got some images and containers already running, and part of the reason for that is that I brought up an OpenShift box, which is why I downloaded the OC client. Um, so, you can see here, for example, that I can do a Docker images. I'm not going to bother to run anything in part because, ah, um, the network here is not allowing me to pull images this morning. I do not have dot in my path. I am a bad person. Um, but I've got some Docker images out there. That's somewhat interesting. Um, I can actually run kube control. And I think there's a pod running. Oh, I'm not allowed to list pods in this particular project. I'm sorry. Uh, OC. Oh, I deleted the project. That's why. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, CLI or the uh, OpenShift web demo here. Doo, doo, doo. I actually deleted that project. That's kind of embarrassing. So I can prove that OC works by running a new project for you. This is a lot harder when you're holding a mic in one hand. Slash OC new project. Foo. So we created a new OpenShift project, and again, I'm not going to launch anything inside of OpenShift because that requires a pull, and we don't actually have network at this conference. So um, as a consequence, I can't actually show you that part. But we've got all of the client tools wired in. This user does not have to SSH into the box. They don't have to deal with the fact that they're running a Linux box if they don't want to. They don't have to deal with any of the connectivity issues. Everything comes pre-configured, including OpenShift. So those are our three personas, Command Line Carla, IDE Igor, and My Environment Mike. I've got the demo working for oh. Eclipse. Yep. We have Eclipse. So uh, uh, I messed up with my environment variables. So now I have them here. So uh, as you can see that uh, here uh, I have a Docker Explorer view and uh, I'm repeating the demo that I did earlier. So here uh, we have to give the name to the connection because uh, your Eclipse Docker tooling can connect to multiple Docker clients. So uh, we can give the name like uh, devcon. And uh, this is the URL of the Vagrant box, and 2376 is the port where Docker daemon is running. And as you can see that uh, these are the certs uh, where the cli required client-side certs are residing. So we need to provide the direct detection. Uh, so ping is now succeed. So this is the ping to the Docker daemon inside the box uh, from my client. And 
Now here you can browse different containers and images that are inside the box. So uh, if you want to pull an image, so you can perform all the operations uh, that you are doing from the do uh, command line using the Eclipse itself. So I can do a pull finish. Okay. So network, come on, it's just one MB. Why do you keep getting network? Okay. <laughs> so here we have the image and uh, if you want to create a container out of it, just right click over the image name, run, and you have the detail uh, options that you can provide to create the container out of image. Okay. Go. So here I'm providing just a command, uh, echo command, and as you can see that uh, there are different options that you can use. If you, if you want to attach some uh, data volume you, you environment variables, you can just uh, put in here and if you want to limit the CPU that you want to provide to this container, uh, all, the, all the operations that are available, all the options that are available via the command line uh, is now, uh, is in the run container view, just finish it, okay, so yeah, here. Yeah. So the output uh, that is being exported by the container inside the box is copied over right to Eclipse. So, so as a demo, this is, uh, to show, showcase the Eclipse connection with the ADB box, right here. So now uh, the Eclipse developer can uh, directly containerize your uh, JBoss or Java application right from the Eclipse uh, inside the box. Yep. So, uh, so how, how did we, how do we make this source? So uh, this Vagrant box that we have now support uh, two different org, orcas, two different or providers, one is VirtualBox and LiveWord. And it is also made up with different set of utility scripts and like, as I said earlier, the, the Docker, Docker daemon is configured for client side tooling to connect and uh, uh, Kubernetes as well as OpenShift is there. We have a Vagrant plugin for client side toolings and we are using CentOS 7 as the base OS for our uh, ADB box. And we are using CentOS build system for building these ADB boxes. Uh, and putting them on Atlas HashiCorp. So uh, as of now, we have uh, five different uh, or five different providers that can run your containers or your application. Um, TLS protected do uh, Docker daemon, Kubernetes single node setup, Mesos Marathon, OpenShift. Uh, the OpenShift that we are providing inside the box is running inside the containers. So the OpenShift is configured inside the box using a different set of containers that uh, together provide the OpenShift service inside the box. We, uh, we have Atomic CLI in the box so that you can use the Atomic CLI and uh, pull in your container images, uh, leverage the labels that you have uh, embedded inside your uh, Docker images as well as deploy Atomic Nullicule images and Nullicule apps. Um, we are currently we are currently building the box that's on HashiCore using CentOS, and we chose CentOS because of its stability, the community of users that it has, and the fact that it has a special interest group system that allows us to build the box easily within their environments. This box can be built on any distribution, um, so we would encourage people in other areas who are interested in seeing this come out for their distribution of choice to work with us on that. We'd love to do that. Um, the CIDC, CICD system and CentOS will probably begin to be used soon so that we have a master test environment as well. Um, so it's what's for dinner. Uh, you can actually use it right now. You can download it from cloud.centos.org. You can also pull it from HashiCore using the standard Vagrant methodology. The client CLIs for your various uh, non-Linux systems or Linux systems are available upstream. You can get Docker, Kubernetes, and OpenShift. Obviously, if your distribution or operating system packages them, we would encourage you to use those. Um, but otherwise, go and get the correct versions from the upstream. Um, there is, oh, if you'll pop back on. There is one note. You can just type vagrant init project atomic slash ADB. If you're running VirtualBox, you do have to make one modification to the Vagrant file. Otherwise, on libvirt, it runs out of the box. But we have sample Vagrant files that will bring up Cube, OpenShift, um, and Mesos Marathon. So you should use those if you want to use those environments.
Everything is online on GitHub under the Project Atomic organization. Um, it's in the ADB and the Vagrant ADB info for the plugin. Uh, as we've mentioned, we are renaming the plugin and adding some additional functionality, so you'll get a pointer soon for that. Um, we do everything in the open on a mailing list, on the Container Tools mailing list. It's a mailing list shared by most of Project Atomic, which allows all of the pieces of the project to stay in touch with what everybody else is doing, so I'd encourage you to join. We hang out on Nulicule and Atomic on Freenode, and we have meetings twice a week related to this part of the project. We meet in IRC on Mondays, and we meet over uh, video conferencing on Wednesdays. Excuse me, on Wednesdays? Yes, Wednesdays. So what's the future like, and how can you help us? Well, first, use it. Help us find the rough edges. Help us figure out what your use cases need that we don't think about. Um, join the project. Give us your input. We're looking at more hypervisors. We're always looking at more orchestrators, especially where there's a use case for more orchestrators. Um, we're improving the plugin to have a more service-oriented architecture so that we can increase the amount of things that a user can do from outside of the box. Um, we are working on some rather big issues right now. We've got some TLS certificate generation problems, so if you happen to love TLS, we'd love to talk to you. Um, we've got four potential solutions for a late certificate generation issue, and if you know something about this, we would like to talk to you. Um, as I mentioned, we have a new Vagrant plugin architecture, so if you like writing Ruby, you like writing Vagrant plugins, there's a space for you here. We are looking at doing Docker image caching. Currently, the CBS is being extended to allow that. It's not there yet. We're going to want to look at other distribution build systems as well where there's desire for that kind of stuff. We're looking at folder synchronization between the local workstation and the Vagrant box. Um, we want to make sure that whatever we choose is both completely open and has unlimited rights of redistribution. So we're looking at alternatives to the traditional hypervisor provided opportunities there in part because we want to try and maintain uniformity in terms of the way the box behaves across different systems. So we're looking at SSHFS. If you've used it, there's a space for you here. Please come. Um, and then we're also working on DNS support because uh, use cases like OpenShift really need DNS support to be useful. Um, in particular, this has been a bit more of a challenge under Windows because Ruby forking has changed a bit and doesn't quite work correctly under Windows. And uh, like three layers deep in the pile of turtles, there's a problem with a Ruby fork. Um, we think we've got it fixed, but if you like digging in piles of turtles, this is good for you. So this is the part where you ask all of the questions, and I make Navid answer them. Program? No. Okay. I don't think either of us personally have looked at the successor program, so it's hard to offer an opinion on it. Um, if you've got information about it, it's definitely something we need to bring up and discuss on the mailing list and figure out what the right path for our project is. And the question was about the successor to um, Vagrant that HashiCorp has come out. And what was the name of it again? Auto? So that was the question for those thousands of people watching at home. One more question? And you get a scarf, by the way. Please come see us. <laughs> You'll be very warm. Yes? Uh, the question was, does the Vagrant file bring up one virtual machine? And right now, all of the providers are configured to launch a single virtual machine. Where they operate in a client server or a master minion style, we are running everything in a single machine. There's um, certainly an opportunity for this to launch multiple machines so that, for example, you could get, say, an entire Kubernetes cluster, um, and we'd certainly take a look at a PR on that. Other questions? And you get a scarf to go with the scarf you have. Everybody gets a scarf. Okay, cool. So um, everything is online in GitHub if you want to see some of the demo scripts that we ran through or, or tried to run through in a couple of cases. These are the project URLs. We strongly encourage you to take a look and visit us. Um, I'm not Naveed Sheikh. He is. I'm still Brian Exelbeard. Here's our Twitter and email address. Thank you very much.
Finished? Yeah, well, you know, we're trying to be on time. So nice. They didn't have as many questions. Did you also, like, did you distribute some scarves? We distributed one, well, technically most people already had a scarf, so one refused it and one took it. So. Okay, probably something. Hi. Hi. Hi, Albi. Nice to meet you. I may try to do that. So, <laughs> Here. Ras, ras. Okay, guys, I see that your laptops are dying, so you have charging like sockets in the desks, yeah, so that you don't search for them in the corners of the room. They should be under the desk. Look closer.
gone from there. Yeah. They've gone from there. Yeah, yeah. So we can be around. I, 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 I guess. Everybody tries to avoid this. Thing. Well, of course, because they know they're on camera. <laughs> Одного хватит.
Раз, раз. Тест, тест. Угу. Прием, прием. Отлично. Угу. Раз, раз.